came from the four corners of the earth. The mightiest gladiators from Great Britain, Australia, the USA, Germany, South Africa, and Russia. Together they united to accept the challenge of the international champion contenders in a battle that will decide who is the best in the world. After six weeks of breathtaking action, the final of International Gladiators 1996 has arrived. And Uli, it's not an exaggeration to say that tonight is one of the most important moments in the athletic lives of our four superb contenders. They have battled their way through the preliminary rounds, the semifinals, and tonight they are poised and ready to go at it one final time. And apart from national pride, all our finalists tonight will be sharing in these wonderful prizes. Our champions will each receive a tremendous trip for two around the world. And our runners up will each take home 2,000 pounds. So our international stage is set. Let's meet tonight's finalists. For the women from Australia, Lorene Bavart. And from the USA, Peggy Odita. Welcome once again, Lorene. Now, I know you're used to international competition. Tell us a little bit about your karate achievements. Well, I've been four times Victorian champion, four times Australian champion, and three times world champion. I've been ranked in the top four for the last seven years. Well, that's pretty terrific, isn't it? We'll be looking out for you. Best of luck, Lorene Bavart. Peggy, I get the sense that competing here on International Gladiators is a lot like a heptathlon in that you don't really compete against your opponent, you really compete against the event. Definitely. You've got to stay focused. You take one event at a time. You're not thinking about what your competitor is doing. You're concentrating on your own game. A little nervous? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Best of luck. Peggy Odita from the USA. So we've met the women. Time now to introduce you to our male contenders. From the USA, Pat Chismazia. And from Australia, Andrew Halliday. Welcome once again, Pat. Tell us, what have you been up to since we saw you last? Have you done any special training to prepare for the final? A lot of resting. <laughs> Just psyching myself out. Get my, uh, get my adrenaline going. I haven't found it yet, but hopefully it'll kick in halfway. It's, each time's a new experience. The very best of luck, Pat Shizmazia. And people in Australia know that you are a superb athlete, Australian gladiator champion. You also won a life-saving title, a former aerobics champion. If you win the International Gladiator Championship, where will it rank among your athletic achievements and why? Um, yeah, that, that's a toughie. Um, no doubt in, in winning International Gladiators will give me a bit more recognition around the world. But um, as far as the competition, I just feel like it's, it's another one of those competitions that I, I go into to, um, to give myself a bit of spice, you know, and, and keep myself um, on the edge the whole time. And, and that's what, what I'm getting out of this. Well, you and Pat should be a great matchup. Andrew Halliday of Australia, best of luck. Let him hear it. Well, there you have it. You've met the participants. Let's get it on. Let the international finals begin. First up on pole axe, it's Lorene from Australia. And 
she's going to be facing Lightning. The UK's Lightning has proved herself in this international series to be one of the finest gladiators in the world. Five, six and just over nine stones, but her Australian opponent, Lorene Bavard, is four inches taller and two Lorene stones heavier. And it's that extra weight which is the problem for Three, Lorene in this event. Two, one. Ten points waiting at the top of the pole for Lorene. But just look at Lightning, smooth, rhythmic climb, completely confident, totally in control. Lorene smiling, she knows she's going to be first to drop. Lightning's there, slaps the button. Lorene down and out. This year, Lightning has conducted herself superbly. A replay will show us her incredible speed on the pole. Lorene scored 10 last time, but against Lightning, she was always going to hit the mat first. Peggy Odita from the US of A, same height as Lorene, but two pounds heavier, which doesn't bode well on the pole. Three, the poles. Three, two, one. And they're away. First to the summit is the second to plummet. Lightning's climbing well. Oh, my goodness, Peggy's off. Well, I've not seen that before on pole axe. You better see what happened there. Peggy tentative, her first time up the pole, loses her grip and takes a flying trip. Well, hardly the start these girls wanted in this international final. After one event, both off the pole, but not off the mark. So we now move into the men's event with Pat from the United States. And he's going to be facing Hunter. The hunky Hunter. He's no Billy Bunter. Superb physical and mental attitude. 6'3", 17 stone. His opponent is Pat Chismazia from America. Interesting to note that Pat is only 10 pounds heavier than his American colleague Peggy, but four and a half stones lighter than Hunter. Three, two, one. Oh, but oh my, Hunter is fast. He's like a rat up a drain pipe. Incredible, look at him haul that huge body up the pole. But Pat's fast too, scored 10 last time, but it's Hunter. Pat was blazing hot up there, but had to slide down the fireman's pole. The Hunter fans celebrate, it's what they've come to expect. Hunter was such agility for a huge man with that lethal combination of speed, skill, strength and stamina outpaces the lighter contender and consigns him to the crash mat. Next up against Hunter, it's Andrew from Australia. Probably the favourite for this international title. The amazing Aussie is just over a stone heavier than Pat but still a massive 53 pounds lighter than Hunter. Two, the Huntsman prepares himself one. for another sculpt. And again, Hunter very fast, but he's going to have his work cut out. Superb technique. Andrew's first time on the pole, but seems to have got the knack. Who's it going to be? Oh, it's Hunter again. Andrew's axed from the pole, and the Hunter keeps a clean sheet. No one else gets the chance to score when this gladiator's around. After one event, Andrew and Pat, nil-nil. Next. Contenders are chomping at the bit and ready to go using the blue scoring markers from the USA, Peggy Odita. <laughs> using the red scoring markers from Australia, Lorene Bavart. USA, Australia. a winning trio, if ever I saw one. Three, two, this is going to be fast. Peggy, oh, flies past the angel. Three points. Lorene with three. What a start, Peggy. Astrakhan holder, North Sahara, two more. Lorene in the centre for three. Peggy, too fast for angel, two more. Lorene sneaks another two for herself. Peggy slams home the blue for another two as well. I think these girls mean business. Reload. Lorene angels down Sahara, zipping through for three with Peggy. Lorene drops it in. Peggy again running rings round them. Two more. Lorene, Astrakhan holder, scores again. So does Peggy. This is the most incredible power ball I've ever seen. Lorene, Angel tries to get a piece, can't hold it. Two more. There's a first. Peggy tackled by Astra. Lorene reloads. Astra's there. And Sahara, left standing, centre basket for three. Thank you. Peggy slams home another for two more. This is a massacre for the Glads. Lorene, oh, for once, misses. And Peggy with a leisurely job to pot another three. 
time running out, and for the first time in Powerball, it's the Gladiators who are grateful. Peggy again, this is hell for the Angel, two more. What an event for the contenders, the highest score in Powerball ever. While Peggy takes a breather, let's look at it again. The Gladiators simply didn't have the power to make the tackles count. The scores after two events, Lorene 15, Peggy 23, back to Mike. The men are ready to be rocked, can they roll? We're about to find out using the blue scoring markers. From Australia, Andrew Halliday. <laughs> Trying to score with the red markers from the USA, Pat Chismazia. <laughs> Australia and USA, Rene! <laughs> Ladies and Meet the Beastie Boys, 52 stones of muscle and mayhem. Ball packs with a hop and a skip. Dynamite pushes him out, and Australia's Andrew. You failed to pop the blue, blue. Andrew again. Doesn't fail this time. Pat with space. Free run for the centre and three. Andrew slips it home for two. Pat again. Sandwiched out by the infant dynamite. Andrew scores three again. Hello, the ref's blown up. It must be the dynamite. He's taken it off. Let's see what happened. Pat tries to split Dynamite and Impy. They sandwich him up, and Dynamite cops one in the chops. John Anderson's there, and the Gladiators' doctor, Bruce Websdale. And unfortunately, he's had his work cut out this season. Certainly quite a knock he's taken, but he wants to continue. He won't let his fans down, and they're pleased about that. 59 seconds remaining. Three... Two, so, 39 one. seconds, it's Pat again, fast feet. Oh, look at that, slips it in, and so does Andrew, right under Impey's nose. The Aussie gets another blue, Dynamite ties him up badly, and here's Pat, Impey, fort napping, three points. Andrew, brushes aside Titan, oh, Pat squeezes two in, and so does Andrew. Pat, Titan gets a grip on the American at last. First decent tackle we've seen from the big fella, Andrew. Oh, Titan takes away his helmet this time, but Andrew takes away the points. John Anderson stopped it again on eight seconds. Get on quickly. Andrew, get on quickly. And that shoulder oh. giving him some trouble. Andrew's girlfriend there, she'll give him some trouble. Timekeeper Andy Norgate straps him into the helmet, but if that shoulder has taken a knock, it's a Three, worry. Two, Here we go one. again. Here comes Andrew again. Oh, Titan way out of his class. Easy two for the Aussie. Pat fast pass Dynamite and Titan for two. Andrew with space in the centre for three, and Pat sneaks in another two on the whistle. What a record breaker. The highest men's powerball ever. Let's see that incident again. He had Dynamite on his back, tried to throw him, but Dynamite, 17 and a half stone, came crashing down on Andrew's shoulder. He felt that. After two events in this international final, the American 14, the Australian 18. Part one, but stay with us. A lot more action to come as we continue after the break with more international gladiators. for lots more action in our next event. First up on Pendulum, from Australia is Lorraine. And she'll be facing the gladiator from the UK, Vogue. Vogue, the British cover girl gladiator. She stands four inches shorter than Lorraine and 22 pounds lighter. Over to John Anderson. Pendulum swings out on this game of cat and mouse, played 30 feet above the arena floor, that ball over 15 feet in diameter. And Vogue straight into action, No, she's got to finish Lorene fast. Vogue high, Lorene going down. The Aussies on the edge of their seats, and Lorene on the edge of the world there. Dramatic shot of that dramatic swing, Vogue tantalizingly close, but Lorene looking to be making good her escape. Marine will collect five points for evading capture for 40 seconds, 10 for lasting the full minute. And Vogue is struggling against the swing at the moment. 
Zareen trying to ride it out. No, she's pulled five. And Vogue almost toe-to-toe -to -toe with her. Both struggling to come to terms with the power of the pendulum. The Australian will feel at home upside down here like that. Loreen using some clever tactics, moving to the toughest part of the pendulum for the gladiator. Loreen trying to do just enough to keep out of harm's way. Yes, she's there. Vogue doesn't snatch the flag. Ten points for Loreen. The Australians celebrate the victory. Down she comes. In those early stages, Vogue was always looming large over Loreen. But when she headed for the south, Vogue's chances had gone west. What a downer. Next up on Pendulum from the USA is Peggy. And she'll be trying to keep out of the clutches of the gladiator from the UK, Zodiac. Zodiac's had a great domestic season this year and a star performer in the internationals. She's an inch shorter than Peggy Odita and two stones lighter. Three, two, one! Zodiac's record on the pendulum is unrivaled and Peggy pulled ten in her previous swing, so this should be a scorcher. Peggy's seen the Zodiac coming for her. Over the top, she's headed right. Peggy successfully putting some space between herself and the Gladiator. The American's giving it plenty, and so is Peggy up there. But Zodiac getting dangerously close. Peggy taking evasive action. Oh, she's gone! Just like she did on the Polax, Peggy makes the error, which costs her the point. Unbelievable. Looking at it again, Peggy sees Zodiac making another assault, tries to drop down as fast as possible, but slips off the net on the pendulum and plunges out of it. After three events, Australia's Lorene swings to 25. Peggy from the US stays on 23. Our first male contender on pendulum from the USA is Pat. And he'll be trying to steer clear of our gladiator from Germany, Flash. Earlier, the American contender told me what he thought of his fellow finalist, Andrew. He's a very tough man. I have a lot of respect for him. It's, uh, it's going to be tough for me. And uh, all, all, all I can do is pray, and when it's all over with, I'll, I'll shake his hand, whether I'm in front or behind, and it's going to be a good bout, for sure. Three, two, one! The German flash sets off to snatch Pat Ensign from his back, and Pat heads for the frozen north as well. He's in for a nasty shot, round and round the Marbury Bush they go. Flash really going for it, Pat scuffling to his right. From down here, he looks like a scarlet crab. Flash is after him. This looks as if it's going to be a war of attrition. Who can wear out who first? But Flash is fast. He's gaining on Pat. Incredibly close. Dives for him. Can't reach him. The American screaming, and Pat looks to have weathered the storm for now. Flash is elected for a game of cat and mouse. If he can't outrun the contender, perhaps he can outthink him. Well, Pat's good for five. Vertically sneaking round the top and Flash trying to keep out of sight. This really is high tech, high altitude, hide and seek. Flash makes a move. The time running down. Oh, Pat has escaped the Flash and claims his reward. Ten points. Cheers from the crowd, especially Galena, married to reigning international champion Wes Berry. This really called for mental as well as physical dexterity. One error from Pat would have broken the stalemate. But that error not forthcoming, so he lives to fight another day. Our next male contender on Pendulum from Australia is Andrew. And he'll be facing from the UK, resident bad boy, Wolf. Getting his usual reception. This afternoon, I asked Andrew what he thought about appearing in this international final. So here I'm in the finals. I'm really prepared for it. Um, I'm not as nervous anymore because, you know, we've done... Uh, this will be the third show. Um, I'm c coming up against um, Pat from the US. Um, back in Australia, we call Pat a, a dark horse because nobody actually think that um, a, a, a guy as plastic as him would, would uh, have as much talent as he does. So um, I'm looking forward to a really good contest from this boy. And... Um, if things go my way, I'll be across the finish line first. Three, two, one! Andrew with that left 
shoulder, heavily strapped, sets off. He's got to stay out of the Wild Wolves' clutches for a full minute if he's to bag 10 points. This is Andrew's first time on the pendulum. He knows the Wolf is fast for a man of his age. And if there's a way to bend the rules up there, he'll find it. The protagonists are both at the top, circling the globe. The Wolf, with the advantage of a superb sense of smell, can sniff out a contender, but Andrew, wary of his wily ways, a very impressive international contender, and highly tipped to take the title. Andrew changing direction, directly opposite the Wolfman. Andrew's pulled five and frankly looks good for the ten. The Wolf needs to use all his cunning if he's to come out of this with any dignity. Changing direction, but he'll need to come up with something a little more ingenious than that. This is the best behaved Wolf has been all season, but that's only because he can't get near the contender to be horrible. Andrew Halliday from Australia really has judged this event very well indeed. He's going to get the maximum. The whistle goes, maximum points for Andrew, maximum encouragement from his girlfriend. Uh-oh, this is going to please him. There's Annie again, camera shy as ever. Nice Wolf t-shirt there, all the better to taunt him with. After three events, Pat climbs up to 24, Andrew swings to 28. On the platform for the contenders, Australian Gladiator champion Loureen Bavard. On the other side of the rings, she's positively electric, she's lightning! Positively charged, the Lightning conceded no points to Peggy on the pole axe, looking to maintain that 100% record now against Loreen. Earlier, I spoke to Loreen about her appearance in this international final. Well, here I am in the final Gladiators, something I thought I would never get to, but I'm here. Semi-final, lots of fun. The games were difficult, especially Hang Tough. Jet shot me down. But Hang Tough again today, hopefully I'll get through. Lightning, undefeated in this event, although she has rings on her fingers, there's no bells on her toes. The only bells we'll hear jangling will be the alarm bells sounding for Loreen. Loreen swings into the scoring zone, Lightning crossing over to put play to Loreen's ambition of adding to her score. Loreen swinging well, she's set her sights on the Gladiators platform. Lightning obviously close though, Loreen swings straight into the same ring as Lightning. Oh, she's out of there! Four marks to Lightning, but no points to Loreen, and she is furious. The karate champion not used to finishing second best. Loreen sets her mind on a ring, but Lightning grabs it ahead of her, and the rest, along with Loreen, went down in history. Up next to the contenders from the USA, Peggy Ojeda. For the Gladiators, the one, the only, Jet. It's the first time we've seen this glamorous gladiator in the international final. It's what the crowd have been waiting for. Here's what the American had to say about her opposition in this final. Today in the finals, I'm going to be competing against Laureen from Australia. Um, she's a tough competitor. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to do against each other. Basically, when I compete, I'm concerned about my own events and what I'm trying to do. I'm not watching what my competitor's doing. Um, again, it's gonna be the person who makes the least amount of mistakes and the person who comes through the strongest in the final event, the Eliminator. Three, two, one! Jet swings out confident in the knowledge that when she previously faced Peggy in international competition, she beat her. Peggy swinging well into the scoring zone. Jet crossing to cover, guarding her platform like a swinging sentinel. Peggy, oh, escapes her clutches, and Jet's in trouble. One ring. Peggy's there. She's done it! Ten points, the first time ever the Jet has been defeated on Hang Tough. It took Peggy 24 seconds to score ten points, and she can't believe it. Well, Jet commits herself to a big swing, mistimes it, Peggy swings out the way. Jet finds herself floundering on one ring, and Peggy finds herself swinging onto Jet's platform. This, an incident-filled international final. After four events, Loreen is on 25, Peggy's on 33. On the platform for the contenders from the USA, Pat Chismazia. <laughs> At the other end of his grid of rings, Cobra. 
this could end in tears. Oh, I think I'd end in tears if I tried that. Don't try this at home. No hissing, just cheers for the snake tip superstar of British gladiators, Cobra, the crowd pleaser. Swings out to face Pat Chismazia. Pat's got to grips with Giant on his last hang tough. That's to say Giant got to grips with Pat and took him down. Oh, Cobra, an elegant exponent of the rings, mixes it with Pat. It's a blur of arms and legs up there. Oh, and Cobra comes away to re-evaluate. One ring finding himself exposed. The Americans know the Gladiator's in trouble. They can sense Pat's in with a chance, but Cobra recovers. Sticks a leg out on Pat. Pat's wing fast. Cobra tying himself up in all sorts of knots, and Pat is free. Cobra one rings, and Pat swings back into trouble. Cobra tries to grab a piece, but the Cobra helicopters to the crash mat. He did that against Andrew Halliday on his last hang tough. Can Pat swing to the platform to score 10? Yes, sir. Pat from the USA picks up match points. The best swinger in town. In the replay, we find that Cobra is one ringed. Goes into a spin, loses control and takes a nosedive. Leaving Pat easy access for the big touchdown. And more importantly, 10 big points. Yes. On the platform for the contenders, Australian Gladiator champion, Andrew Halliday. For the Gladiators, it's the German Giant. The Giants with a 100% record in Hang Tough. But the Aussies are confident, especially Andrew's girlfriend, little Aussie Annie. Over to referee John Anderson. Three, two, one. Giants only six foot three, so German Giants must be traditionally smaller than the Giants we're used to. A genial gladiator, but one who knows how to get the job done. Andrew Holiday from Australia at a disadvantage following that shoulder injury. Heavily strapped, but swinging well. And into the scoring zone. Giant looks out of place. No, swings in, round the back way. Ties Andrew up with his legs. Andrew struggling like a flyer. Trap Giant points for the takedown. Yes, the Giant victorious on the rings again. After four events, Pat swings up to 34, while Andrew stays on 28. Because this is the final, we have something very special for you here tonight. Now, somebody who the South African viewers will all recognise is the host of Gladiators, Mr Glenn Hicks. And he's speaking right now with two very special guests. Thanks, Kimberly. I'm sure everybody will remember last year's International Gladiators finals and the drama they produced. Well, with us here tonight, the winners from last year's finals. And I can tell you what, they are some very, very special people. And it will, of course, be their last night as reigning champions of International Gladiators. From the United States, Wesley Two Scoops Berry. And from the UK, Eunice Huttar. Very, very popular winners here last year in International Gladiators. I've got to ask you, Wesley, I've been wondering since I've come out from South Africa, please explain Two Scoops. Real short and simple, my mother, she would never let me get away from the table unless I had two scoops of vegetables. <laughs> so that's how that name started with my mom giving me always two scoops. And that's why you're so big and strong now. That's very correct. Two scoops, you get ready over there for something very, very special from the main man from the USA. <laughs> Eunice, it's been a great, great year for you since you won International Gladiators in this arena a year ago. I know for starters, you defended your European uh, karate title. Yeah, it was um, freestyle karate and I um, gained my European title, so that, that was under my belt just after I finished Gladiators. And another nice big boost for you, you got involved in the movies. I mean, you're a big, big star now. Tell me about that. Yeah, um, through Gladiators, I, I got asked to audition for the James Bond movie and um, I got on it, did my stuff and it was totally awesome. Eunice Huttard, Gladiator star and movie star. One of you and I stand to one side here. And ladies and gentlemen, silence please, as Two Scoops takes on the car. <laughs> well, he said he could do it, and there it is. Let's see it one more time in slow motion. Wesley, Two Scoops, takes the car. Superstar, ladies and gentlemen, Two Scoops. And Eunice Huckard, great to see you again. The champions from last year. But of course, we crown new champions tonight. Let's go on with the finals, our next event. Up on the duel, it's Lorene. 
and she's going to be facing Jazz. The American Gladiator looking to make Loreen dance on that platform. Same height as Loreen, but 22 pounds heavier. On top. Loreen goes low, straight for the ankle. Well, I've never seen that before. Jazz digging in, and so's Loreen. Loreen, three times world karate champion. But how is she with a futile stick? Well, Jazz looking to offload some bombs, and Loreen concentrating upstairs, flying in those headshots. Bossing Jazz on the bombs. Jazz is going to have to improvise up there. Oh, Jazz spending a lot of time bent over there, while Loreen just poked away at her. Loreen's first time on the platform. Jazz can finish it with a belting hook. It's just a question of getting one in. Too late, time up. Jazz congratulates Loreen and her five points. And the Aussies are pleased with that. In the replay, we can study Jazz's technique. Stay low, build yourself up, and then let fly with a belter. A less durable duelist would have gone. And even Jazz was amazed that Loreen kept in there, battling away. Next up, it's Peggy Odita. And she's facing Flame. The Australian Flame, hot stuff indeed. An inch shorter than Peggy, but a pound heavier. And uh, Peggy looking to snuff out the flame. On guard! Three, two, one! Let's go! And Flame gets to it, throwing lefts and rights, keeping Peggy on her toes. The Gladiator knows Peggy scored a KO against Sahara in the semis. Flame keeping up relentless pressure on Peggy. Oh, what a roundhouse! Peggy with a backhander and another! Tremendous impact there. Oh, and Flame smiling, and Peggy looking to knock that smile off her face. Peggy digs in, ducks, and nudges her off the platform, out the back door with just under five seconds left. Peggy Odita of the USA scores 10. She knows she's been in a fight, the stars and stripes are flying, and after five events, Loreen from Australia is on 30, while Peggy's on 43. going to be facing Vulcan. Vulcan from Australia. Hard to see if he's got pointy ears under that hair. Stands four inches taller than Pat and over five and a half stones heavier. Pat will do well to pull ten in this battle. Three, two, one. And the Vulcan gets to work. Not as we know it. First time either of them have been up on the platforms. Vulcan with a relentless hooking style. Oh, off he goes. Pat bails out the back door after that uppercut. The Vulcan is the victor. Captain James T. Kirk will be proud of that. There's the view from the cheap seats. Pat does well to get stuck in. Worries Vulcan, but Vulcan with the hook and that stinging left uppercut gets the job done. So before we move into the second part of the men's duel, we have some rather devastating news from the Australian camp. Andrew, I know you sustained an injury in Powerball. Explain what's happened. Well, in less technical terms, it's a grade two to four um, injury of the AC joint. Um, All right. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> so does this mean, obviously, in Hang Tough, you had a pretty tough time, and now you feel you can't go on? Um, yeah, well, I, was, I had the, um, the, the fortunate... Um, well, I had, had some painkillers, basically, and, uh, and that sort of saw me through, but um, I, I won't be able to carry on. Well, I should be here. The audience are just as upset about that as we all are here because it's been great to see you and you must feel pretty devastated to be letting go of the competition at this late stage. Well, uh, I've, I've done my best to, to get this far and, and the audience has been great. I, like, you know, it's been fantastic. They feel like my family. <laughs> and, um, and I just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm right behind Shane and I hope he can do it for Australia. Well, let's hope so. Shane Saltmarsh is the Australian substitute. Tell us just very quickly a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm 28, I'm married, got a three-year-old son, and I, I'm a physical training instructor for the Special Air Service Regiment in Australia. Well, you will, of course, adopt Andrew's 28 points, if I'm correct, and um, you'll go up there on, on duel and do it for Australia. Let's hear it for Shane Saltmarsh! Well, a tragedy for Andrew Halliday, having come this far in the international final. Shane Saltmarsh, as you heard, a physical training instructor with the Australian Special Air Service. He climbs up to face the American Hawk. Shane, impressive stats, the same height as the injured Andrew, but six pounds heavier. And he's going to be facing Hawk. Well, the only 
talking hawk in captivity. The American Gladiator star is five inches taller than Shane and four stones heavier. And Hawk appears to be shaking. I dread to think what he's trying to do up there. Well, a rare shot of Hawk with his mouth shut there, and Shane getting to work with a pugil stick. Hawk swinging wildly. Hawk down on one knee. Can Shane finish him? Oh, not quite able to put him to flight. Hawk sticking in a couple. Oh, Shane steps across. A disaster for the Australian just as he's about to humble the Hawk. Shane's supporters can't believe he threw it away. And Shane was really taking the fight forward to Hawk. But he leant forward, stepped across, and kissed the points goodbye. Andrew Halliday's girlfriend acclaims the substitute Aussie after five events. Pat from America has 34, Shane from Australia, 28. Well, it's fast, it's furious, and it's the only thing that stands between our contenders and international glory. It is, of course, the Eliminator. Join us after the break here on International Gladiators. <laughs> where we're just moments away from finding out who will be our champions of International Gladiators 1996. Now, in the women's competition, Lorene's on 30 points, Peggy's on 43 points. That's a 13-point difference, which will give Peggy a six-and-a-half-second head start. The very best to both girls. We'll see them both at the end. Over to John Anderson. USA, you will go on my first whistle. Australia, you will go on my second whistle. Three! To become two, international gladiator one. champion 1995, Peggy Odita, 27 from the USA, starts to run high and low hurdles. Here comes 30-year-old Lorene Bavard from Australia, fastest eliminator timed at 1.10, and Peggy Odita faltering on the ropes. Lorene Bavard desperate for this title. The Australian gladiators on their feet. Peggy swinging well on the overhead ladder, looks to have got it together at last, onto the rollers. Her fastest eliminator timed at 106, onto the net. And Loreen going like a rocket. Loreen very fast on the cargo net, looks to have stolen the lead. It's neck and neck on the net. Peggy pulling it back as they hit the top together. Oh, Loreen will go to the furthest ship, Australia and America. Step for step, level on the zip. Simultaneous splashdown. We couldn't ask for a better final. Lorene is the first to recover. We'll go to the furthest balance beam. Side by side on the beam. Now Peggy's hit the front. It's the Travelator next to become the International Gladiators Champion of Champions. Peggy's going for it. Has she got enough? Yes, she has. Peggy Odita from the US of A is the ladies International Gladiators Champion of Champions. It's like the 4th of July down there. Lorene still struggling at the Travelator. She's getting there. She's there. What a superb athlete and what a courageous runner-up. Swings through the burst. She did Australia proud, but her supporters distraught. Adina, congratulations. You are the no international gladiator champion. Lorene Bavard of Australia proved that six and a half seconds can evaporate in a hurry. It can. I just want to say, people don't know these games take a lot out of you physically. And mentally, and when you're down, you gotta pull from within, because that's where you pull the true champion. And today, I pulled it out. I'm so happy. Peggy Odini, you had a great run here in Birmingham, England, to present you with the International Gladiator Trophy, last year's champion, Eunice Huthart. Our very own Eunice hands her the trophy and the trip around the world. tonight. She had the six and a half second head start, which it seemed to me you managed to catch up by the time you reached the cargo net. Yeah, it was a balance beam. She caught in the balance beam. She was a tough competitor. She did really well. Never mind. Next time. We hope so too. It's been great to have you on the show. There is one small consolation prize, and here, who better to present you with it than this fabulous, handsome man, Wesley Berry. There's the prize. There's the trophy. And let's hear it for Lorraine Bavard. Falcon urging the Aussies in the crowd to show their appreciation, and Loreen hails the new international championship title holder. But it's not over yet. In the men's championship, Pat has a six-point lead over Shane. That bowls down to a three-second head start. USA, 
you will go on my first whistle. Australia, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, America's Pat Chismazia makes his bid for the international title. And here comes Shane Saltmarsh from Australia. Shane, 28 years old, untried over the eliminator. Pat, 26, fastest time over this course, 56 seconds. Onto the hand ladder, straight on the rope. Galena urging Pat on. And Pat spinning those pedals onto the rollers next. And it looks, if anything, he's extending his lead onto the net. Shane over the bowlers and joins him on the net. Andrew Halliday urging Shane up the net, but Pat's going to hit the top first. Sprints to the zip. Pat Chisbazia can taste victory and the championship. Splash down. The graveyard of the balance beam and the travelator line waits. Andrew's in the arena. And Pat. Oh, is he going to wobble? Oh, he freezes like a statue on the beam. He gets it together again. Next, it's the travelator. Here he comes. He's there, he pumps up the Travelator, Patches Marzia from the United States, the men's 1995 International Gladiator Champion of Champions. The party's already started as Shane drives himself up the Travelator. Shane Schultbarsch came in at the last moment for Andrew Halliday. A gallant effort, recognised by Andrew. It's nice to see you smile, I guess you're a happy bunny now. Oh no, that was perfect all the way through, I'm very pleased with myself on that one. Just a wee bit of a tinker there on the balance beam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, that was actually good. I gave myself 10 points on that one. <laughs> I made it, made it without falling off. You recovered? I recovered. That's, that's what I did. Well, Patches Mazia, you are the champion of Gladiators 1996, international champion. And here's last year's champion to present you with a trophy and a trip around the world for two. Wes Berry hands the title on to his fellow countrymen and the crowd acclaim the new king. Shane, you had to come in in a tough position. Andrew gets hurt, your teammate goes down. You really don't have much of a chance to psych yourself up for the entire day, but I think I speak for all the competitors here, the referees, everybody who works on our show. You represented the Australians well, and the Australian team is a force to be reckoned with in international gladiators. Hey, thank you. Uh... We have got a very strong team and we knew it was going to come down to who had the most points and well done to Pat and uh, so well done to Andrew as well, it's hard to make that decision to pull out. Yeah, again Shane, you were a great representative for your country and Australia as I said before was terrific here in Birmingham, England. Shane Saltmarsh from Australia, congratulations. <laughs> and to present you with the runners up trophy, Eunice Huthart, last year champion. So, in 1995, America rules the international gladiator arena. Shane, with the trophy and the runner-up check of £2,000. Andrew Halliday there to share the glory and the cash, I hope. What a great final it's been. So, an amazing ending to an amazing day. Patches, Mozzie and Peggy Odita of the USA succeed Eunice Huthart and Wesley Berry as international gladiator champions and Uli, it was everything we thought it would be. It certainly was. Nail-biting, heart-stopping, blood, sweat and tears. It was fabulous. You had to feel, Kimberly, in your first go-round on international gladiators, other than the tough assignment of having to interview Russian contenders <laughs> and gladiators, that this was something very special for it you. It certainly was something very special. And on behalf of the Australian gladiators and challengers and myself, I'd just like to say thank you so much for having us here. It has been the most incredible competition ever. Well, that uh, does it for us. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did. For Kimberly Joseph and Ulrika Johnson, I'm Mike Adamley. We'll see you again next year for another edition of International, International Gladiators. Gladiators. Bye. Good night, everyone. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. And there'll be more whistle-blowing from our favourite Scott, John Anderson, in more Gladiators new and next here on Challenge. Whilst over on pick, fly on the wall, luggage, scanner and uniform. Depends where they land, doesn't it? For nothing to declare. Are you ready?